Say, Uncle Gloucester, if our brother come, where shall we sojourn till our coronation? Were it think best unto your royal self, if I may counsel you, some day or two your highness shall repose you at the tower, <laughs> then where you please and shall be thought most fit for your best health and recreation. Hmm. I do not like the tower of any place. Did Julius Caesar build that place, my lord? He did, my gracious lord, begin that place, which since succeeding ages have re-edified. Is it upon record, or else reported, successively from age to age, he built it? Upon record, my gracious lord. But say, my lord, it were not registered. Methinks the truth should live from age to age, as to a retale to all posterity. Hmm. even to the general ending day. <laughs> so wise, so young, they say, do ne'er live long. What say you, uncle? I'd say without characters, fame lives long. <laughs> Thus, like the formal vice iniquity, I moralize two meanings in one word. That, Julius Caesar, was a famous man. With what his valor did enrich his wit, his wit set down to make his valor live. <laughs> <laughs> Death makes no conquest of his conqueror. For now he lives in fame, though not in life. Hmm. I'll tell you what, my cousin Buckingham. What, my gracious lord? And if I live until I be a man, I'll win our ancient right in France again, or die a soldier as I lived a king. <laughs> Short summers likely have a forward spring. Now in good time, here comes the Duke of York. Richard of York, how fares our noble brother? Well, my dear lord, so must I call you now? Aye, brother, to our grief as it is yours. Too late he died that might have kept that title, which by his death hath lost much majesty. How fares our cousin, noble Lord of York? I thank you, gentle uncle. Oh, my lord, you said that idle weeds are fast in growth. The prince, my brother, hath outgrown me far. He hath, my lord. <laughs> and therefore, is he idle? Oh, my fair cousin, I must not say so. Then he is more beholding to you than I. Uh, he may command me as my sovereign, but you have power in me as in a kinsman. I pray you, uncle, give me this dagger. My dagger, little cousin? <laughs> With all my heart. A beggar, brother, of my kind uncle, that I know will give. And being but a toy, which is no grief to give. A greater gift than that I'll give my cousin. A greater gift? Oh, that's the sword to it. Aye, gentle cousin, were it light enough. Oh, then I see you will part but with light gifts, and weightier things you'll say a beggar nay. It is too weighty for your grace to wear. <laughs> I weigh it lightly, were it heavier. What would you have my weapon, little lord? I would, that I might thank you as you call me. Oh. Little. Ha! Huh. My lord of York will still be cross and talk. Uncle, your grace knows how to bear with him. You mean to bear me, not to bear with me. Uncle, my brother mocks both you and me, because that I am little, like an ape. He thinks that you should bear me on your shoulders. <laughs> with what a sharp provided wit he reasons, to mitigate the scorn he gives his uncle, he prettily and aptly taunts himself. <laughs> so cunning and so young is one. <laughs> my lord, will please you pass along. <clears throat> Myself and my good cousin Buckingham will to your mother to entreat of her to meet you at the tower and welcome you. What? Will you go on to the tower, my lord? My lord protector will have it so. I shall not sleep in quiet at the tower. Why? What should you fear? Marry, my uncle Clarence, angry ghost. My grandam told me he was murdered there. I fear no uncle's dead. No, none that live, I hope. And if they live, I hope I need not fear. But come, my lord, and with a heavy heart, thinking on them, go I unto the tower. Think you, my lord, this little prating York was not incensed by his subtle mother to taunt and scorn you thus opprobriously? No doubt, no doubt. Mm. Oh, it is a perilous boy, bold, quick, ingenious, forward, mm. capable. Mm. He is all the mothers from the top to toe. Well, let them rest. Mm. Come hither, Catesby. Thou art sworn as deeply to effect what we intend as closely to conceal what we impart. Thou knowest our reasons urged upon the way. What thinkst thou? Is it not an easy matter to make William Lord Hastings of our mind for the instalment of this noble duke in the seat royal of this famous isle? He, for his father's sake, so loves Prince Edward that he will not be one to aught against him. What thinkst thou then of Stanley? Will not he? He will do all in all as Hastings doth. Well then, 
no more but this. Go, gentle Catesby, and, as it were, far off sound our Lord Hastings, how he doth stand affected to our purpose, mm. and summon him to-morrow to the tower to sit about the coronation. If thou dost find him tractable to us, encourage him, and tell him all our reasons. If he be leaden, icy, cold, unwilling, be thou so too, and so break off the talk, and give us notice of his inclination. For we to-morrow hold divided counsels, wherein thyself shall highly be employed. Mm. Commend me to Lord William. Tell him, Catesby, his ancient knot of dangerous adversaries, to-morrow are let blood at Pomfret Castle. And bid my lord, for joy of this good news, give Mistress Shaw one gentle kiss the more. Hmm. <laughs> good Catesby, go. Effect this business soundly. My good lords both, with all the heed I can. Shall we hear from you, Catesby, ere we sleep? You shall, my lord. At Crosby House, there shall you find us both. Now, my lord, what shall we do if we perceive Lord Hastings will not yield to our complots? Oh. Chop off his head? Oh. Something we will determine. And look, when I... I am king. Claim thou of me the earldom of Hereford, and all the movables whereof the king my brother was possessed. Oh, I'll claim that promise at your grace's hand. And look to have it yielded with all kindness. <laughs> Come, <laughs> let us sup betimes that afterwards we may digest our complots in some form. Mm -hmm.